This episode sponsored by Lake Monster Details, producing the Don's Light and Magic Legacy line of parts, offering upgrade parts and decals for accuracy, special effects, and lighting. Visit www.lakemonsterdetails.com and make it glow. Also sponsored by GCALS, producing aftermarket replacement decals and custom quality graphics for your favorite spaceships. Visit www.gcals.company.site and add some personalization to your sci-fi models today. Also sponsored by Mask Design, boldly going where no masking kit has gone before. Take your model to the next level of detail and accuracy with a masking kit from Mask Design. Visit Mask Design on Facebook or click the ordering link in the notes below the video. What's up, fellow modelers? Will here. Welcome to the Anson's Chair. New day, another episode. <laughs> it's a flurry of episodes coming out right now for me, but uh, getting quite a bit of work done. And uh, but one thing is, I, I realized that as I'm doing the uh, the Enterprise A Ian Lawrence tribute build, I'm at the point now where I'm putting top uh, put a top coat on the saucer, and I'm not going to touch that saucer until at least a couple days. I'm going to let that top coat dry. And uh, before I fiddle with it or, or even touch it. So right now it's sitting across from me on the table drying. And it's going to sit there for at least another day or two. And I figure, hey, I've got time. Why not work on a build? So, excuse me. Um, so I'm, I'm working on the, the uh, NCC 2000 Excelsior. The 1-1000 kit. And uh, I am uh, waiting on a couple things. I'm waiting on the Aztec uh, decals from Gus. That's what I'm going to use to do the aztec on this one. And uh, I'm also waiting for some upgrade parts from Cass over at Lake Monster Details because he has an upgrade set for this 1-1000 kit, and it's a great set. So uh, while I'm waiting for that, though, there's a couple things I can do to prep this model that I need to do ahead of time anyway. And one of those is getting the windows drilled out and uh, filled with UV resin is how I'm doing it, and uh, getting this uh, ready to, uh, to light. So uh, while I'm waiting for his parts, I can get, at least get that part done. I've got to do the saucer too. I will probably get to that next episode, start working on that some, just to have everything prepped. So then once I get Cass's stuff, I can start putting this together. And then once I get it together, it'll be ready for Gus's Aztec decal. So without further ado, give me a minute. I'll put you on the bench. We'll get to work. All right, so first thing I'm doing right out of the box is uh, working on these windows because if you want to light this model, um, you're going to have to do some drilling. I, I thought they were going to release this in more of a translucent uh, plastic. I mean, you probably could light this from behind, but there's uh, so many uneven spots that you probably wouldn't. Uh, you, you've got ribs, rib details in here and all that, and, and the pins, you'd have to remove some of those. Uh, it probably wouldn't get very good even light out of it. And uh, one thing we're going to have to figure out is this, uh, this bay down here underneath. I don't know if it's just cargo or, or bay or what, but uh, it uh, it blocks some of these windows. So we're going to have to figure out something for that. But uh, basically what I'm doing is putting the decal, just the window decal on and letting it dry and set. And then I'm coming in with my pin vise and a, uh, I don't know what size, probably about a one millimeter drill bit. I'm, I'm over drilling these windows a little bit as far as the size because... I'm going to tackle this, if you've seen my Enterprise C build, I'm going to tackle this pretty much the same way I did that. I'm going to drill all these windows out, I'm going to fill it with UV resin, come back and sand them nice and smooth, and then I am uh, attempting to cut some very small window masks for this. And the windows aren't going to be perfectly shaped, but at this scale, 
he, you're not gonna you're not gonna know this. It's it's gonna be. Uh, I'll be able to. It, my cricket can basically cut. Uh, it could cut the the round windows perfectly fine for this scale, but the oval windows it tends to be uh, a little uneven in spots. So what I have to do is print a ton of oval windows, or cut a, a ton of oval windows on vinyl, and then pick the ones that look the best. Is basically what I have to do in order to uh, to be able to do this. Fortunately, there's not a ton of oval windows. You got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You got ten oval windows on each side, and you can see on this side I've already started drilling this out let me focus and you can see I've oversized those holes just a little bit the oval windows are probably a little bit more oversized than the round ones um, but uh, they're oversized a little bit so I can use the decals they are in line for the most part there's a couple windows that are a little bit out of line but with the uh, oversizing of the holes I can uh, work the mask a little bit to uh, get those even back out but uh, for the most part they are even where they need to be so I'm working on drilling these out and uh, the one thing I want to mention though is you get window decals for the the, the main hole here but you're missing a, a line of windows there's actually supposed to be uh, if you look at the studio model there's a line of windows that go along this edge now on the Enterprise B when they redid the model for the Enterprise B they wrapped those windows around the front on the Excelsior they only start from eh, about about right here and then come back and, and the last window is just before you get to the uh, the pylons that come out so um, I've, I've contacted Gus and Gus is working on making uh, that window decal so that uh, if you want it uh, you can get a hold of Gus and uh, get a hold of a set of his decals for that and it'll have that missing decal for that because uh, it's not in the kit. There's no decal for this in the kit. So you're missing a row of windows right here. Very similar to the Enterprise C, uh, which if you saw that build, I added that row of windows back in as well. I'm going to do it on this model too. Now this is going to take uh, a little bit of work to, uh, to add those windows, drill those windows out on this lip. Um, because I'm going to have to drill the windows out and I'm probably going to have to dremel this edge down a little bit a little bit deeper here so that you can get light through those windows but uh, I'm also uh, running into some issues with these pegs these pegs block some of the windows but what I'll probably do is just make those windows the blacked out windows um, there's no real rhyme or reason as to what windows have to be lit and what windows can be blacked out so you've definitely got this middle window here uh, that's going to have to be either blocked out or that peg is going to have to be removed and I think the easiest thing is going to be just to make that light maybe even all three of these windows blocked out, uh, blacked out um, and then on the front here I think that peg might sit back far enough to where I don't have to worry about uh, blacking these windows out but I may black them out anyway if I notice that there's too much of a shadow being cast over it um, same thing on this side the pegs are in the same spot so same concerns there and uh, I do want to mention too that with this decal you are missing one window there should be you can see let me focus oh, too far you see that one window I added back here uh, that is missing that should be there and that's missing from the decal sheet ends right here so I've added that window in I will drill that out you can see I've already drilled it out on this side and uh, work that in that's probably something else I should mention to Gus but I don't think it's that big of a concern for him to uh, to worry about adding that window it's not that hard to go in and add it so uh, but just be aware that if uh, you're trying to be as accurate as possible with this model that window is missing from this decal sheet there should be one window by itself back here uh, but other than that the uh, the window layouts look pretty close they're uh, they're not a hundred percent but uh, you know, I'm not going to be that hard of a uh, rivet counter on this, but I did want to point out a couple of things that are missing from uh, these decals. So I'm going to keep working on this. I am going to uh, get this side drilled out as well. And uh, then I'm going to get this filled in with my UV resin and get it sanded smooth. And uh, before I put the masks on, we'll come back and take a look at it. Alright guys, I just want to mention that uh, I highly recommend if you're going to drill windows into your model, 
that you use a pin vise and not uh, one of those uh, Dremels or, or anything high power. Now, I think uh, Tamiya and maybe a couple other companies make a, a low powered, uh, low speed drill that might work. But uh, personally, I, I, I prefer to do it by hand and it, <laughs> at some point I'm not going to be able to. I, I can feel my hand already. Uh, as I get older, I'm probably going to have some arthritis issues later on. But uh, I, I still prefer to use a pin vise to do it just because it's less issue with uh, making the windows way bigger than what you want them or rounding out the oval windows too much. Um, and it just, it's, it's easier to control it with this versus, you know, especially with a Dremel if you can't control the speed. Now, the Dremel I have, and I may switch to it because I'm not so much worried about the size and, and the windows uh getting oversized on these because I'm going to fill them in. But my Dremel uh, lets me to set the speed on it. I think most Dremels do. But uh, uh, I may switch to this later just to save my, my hand the pain because I don't really need to worry too much about not rounding these windows out. But especially uh, on the, uh, the 1537 refit that I'm doing, uh, when you're using the photo etch to, uh, as a template to drill those windows, uh, probably the best thing to do is just you put that template on and mark it. You know, get you a, uh, and I may talk about this in that video, but um, you know, get you a, a uh, <clears throat> sharpie, and uh, instead of holding the template up while you drill, hold the template there, mark the windows with a sharpie, and then remove the template because what can happen over time is uh, when you're drilling with a template, you can round out the template itself. So uh, I would suggest not, not holding the template. Well, that's a whole different build. We'll talk about that on that build. But on this one, uh, I'm just using the, the, uh, the decals as kind of an idea of where to, uh, to drill these holes. And, and the other thing is with using a high speed drill, um, instead of being able to use one that's a lower speed or one that you can really turn the speed down on, is you could start drilling in one spot and then the drill starts moving. The next thing you know, you got a gouge or you start drilling the hole in the wrong place. It's just to me a lot easier to control it with a pin vise. Now, the bit I'm using on here, like I said, I think it's like a one millimeter bit, maybe uh, maybe a little bit bigger. I'm not sure. Now, I did have a set of, uh, I did pick up a set of these, and I've had these for a while, for a couple of years. They've just been sitting in my drawer because I knew I was going to have issues with these. And sure enough, um, I got these, I think, from Harbor Freight. And uh, no matter how slow I went with it or how careful I was being with it I still managed to break four of the bits and uh, didn't get very far I didn't even get one side done before I was through four bits trying to drill they're just really cheaply made bits you're better off going with a decent size drill bit if you can and uh, a steel drill bit if you can find one in the size that you want uh, versus those cheap ones they, they just don't last uh, most of the problem was when I would drill these windows around these peg holes, as soon as I would break through, it would catch on the peg hole and just immediately break. I wouldn't even have a chance to really stop and back it out. It would just break. So that's why I switched to this drill bit. And uh, these, these are pretty much trash. I mean, I'm going to keep them just in case I come up with something. You know, maybe one or two holes I need to drill <laughs> that I can afford to break a drill bit on. But uh, for drilling all these windows, this this has lasted me all uh Pretty much half of this side and a third into this side so uh, definitely pays to get better drill bits but uh, I just want to mention that you know just for those that, that may want to say oh it won't be a lot easier if I just use the power drill well it will be but there's also a chance of making the windows larger now if you're gonna follow this like I'm doing and fill these in with resin sand them and then try to use some type of mask uh, to mask these off and, and light block around them then it doesn't really matter if you make them way larger or you mess them up as you're drilling them. But uh, if you're just going to be drilling these and then maybe, even, you know, whether you fill them in or not with uh, with uh, either some micro crystal clear or a UV resin, you still don't want them to be out of round too much. So just, uh, just something I want to toss in there real quick. I'm going to keep drilling these and we'll come back and take a look here in a little bit. All right, so one more quick thing to mention here. I'm, I'm done drilling all the windows out. On this part anyway still got more to drill on the saucer yet but um, I noticed that around uh, these openings here and I forget what these are they're not the photon launchers um, but uh, these ports right here on, on both sides of your deflector dish I noticed there's a bit of a raised area around those you're gonna want to sand that smooth it shouldn't be like that 
And uh, I also noticed that there's a bit of uh, flashing. Uh, it's not really a raised area. It's just a little bit of flashing around the deflector dish itself. You're going to sand that smooth too. That shouldn't be there. I'm not sure what that's from. I don't know if that's from when they were making the mold and they used uh, put the parts together. Maybe there was a little bit of a an edge there that uh, the uh, when they, they make the models that the um, plastic catches onto or, or leaks into. I don't know. But uh, just sand those areas smooth and um, make sure too once you're done drilling your holes, run your fingernail over the side of the hole. Make sure you got all that uh, de leftover decal residue off because I see a little bit that's being stubborn even though I've sanded it. Make sure you get all that off and then you know give the light sanding and uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go wash this. Uh, this one I got to do the windows on yet uh, but I've got to mark them out on here yet. I just got them on this piece of tape but I need to duplicate that onto another piece of tape so that I can put it on the other side and have them even. Uh, so I'm going to wash this part um, because you want to make sure you wash all your parts before you you start doing any assembly and uh, but I always wait to when I got drill windows I always wait till after I drill the windows out because washing it also helps get rid of any loose particles um, any dust that's on here from drilling helps clean it out and then if there is just a little bit of decal residue on here it should help get that off too so I'm gonna go get this part washed and uh, we'll do some work on this part and we'll come back here and take a look all right, so I've got all the uh, windows on the uh, secondary hull all uh, drilled out. You see, they look terrible. They look a hot mess, but it doesn't matter. Like I said, these are getting filled in with resin, sanded smooth, uh, and then uh, I'm using masks. So if you haven't seen my Enterprise C build, you'll see uh, what I'm talking about here in a little bit. Um, I was wrong. You didn't actually have to, to clear any material from behind on this uh, this upper part here. It actually drilled straight through. The only difference is these ones from here back drilled into the opening inside the hole here. These forward ones, these two, what's well, going to be two oval windows and two round windows, drilled into this cavity in here. So what you're going to have to do is, and I've, I've already assembled this, I'm going to have to do some putty work on it to, uh, to take care of the seams, but uh, what you got to do is remove some material from this back corner and then a notch. Let me, let me zoom this or focus this a little bit. And then a notch on that uh, right there. So a notch right there and then take off some material on the back here on both sides. You can see the two two areas where I cleared off some material. It's not a lot you don't you don't have to clear off a lot. It doesn't block the window entirely uh, if you don't remove that. And you could probably get away with not removing any of it but I don't want it casting a shadow even as small as it'll be on the windows. You can see there where uh, they drilled into that opening so and I've also drilled an, a hole in the opening up here to run all my wiring uh, from the saucer once I get all that connected down uh, into the secondary hole here and then also so I can run a, a light up in here because obviously I'm going to have to light inside this neck here to get these windows lit up so that'll work um, I did I was I, I got one thing mixed up uh, a little bit ago these are the photon launchers I don't know oops let me focus back now. Uh, these are the photon launchers on the other side. I was thinking about these two up here. There's a little bit of a discrepancy about uh, what these are uh, as to whether these are photon launchers or uh, some type of shuttle bay. Now, supposedly, now I've looked at, I know what scene they're talking about in Generations where they first show the scene from inside the lounge of the, uh, the lower section of the Enterprise B. It looks like there's a shuttle coming out of here, supposedly. Now, I don't know, because a person walks past the screen, you see this shuttle. Looks like it could just be turning around in front of the ship right there. So, I don't know that there's necessarily a shuttle coming out of this. But, uh, anyway, that's what some people think. But, uh, if you look at the schematics, uh, and actually the, the um, ooh, let me pull it up. I'll show you this real quick. This might not pull up big enough for you to see on the screen here but the actual schematic that is in the background uh, when you see the uh, the bridge of Enterprise B when you look at that schematic there's actually two photon launchers one here one uh, well it only shows you the profile so you only see the one here and then another one up here so that would seem to indicate that this is an upper photon launcher why you would need it I don't know but uh, that's what it shows on the schematic so I'm not sure uh, 
if that that was uh, the intention or not but uh, that's what I'm gonna have to go with because that's what the schematic shows uh, just it just doesn't make sense to me for this to be a shovel bay but especially when you've got these uh, these things protruding from here that look like uh, it, it doesn't it's not a shuttle bay door there so I don't I don't know if that's a shovel bay but just my opinion just my two cents but um, so this will um, this will all get glued into place and I'll be able to light all these windows now so my next step is as I said I'm gonna take this in I'm gonna wash it now that I've got all the windows drilled out on it and then I'm gonna start filling these holes with uh, my uh, UV resin and get these sanded smooth so uh, once I get that done before I go to mask we'll come back and I'll show you what that looks like all right so here is my uh, progress <laughs> my progress so far this has taken me the better part of a day to do this to drill all this out and then uh, to be able to come back in and fill the windows I'm still not done yet I finished this uh, this upper section I've got those all drilled out and uh, filled in let me grab my flashlight that might come in handy here in a second but of course the camera's going to wash this out probably let me try focusing a little bit Yep, there you go. So you can see those windows. You can see them actually without the flashlight. But uh, you can see where I've got those filled in. And they are ready to go. And like I said, it pretty much drills into this, this inner side anyway. So I, I won't have to add any extra light. That'll just come from whatever light I light the rest of the windows with. And then on this one, I've got this side filled in. You can see how atrocious those oval windows are. But again, I wasn't too worried about it. I want them to be oversized. And uh, I've got the masks that I'm going to try to use on this cut out. Still got to fill this side yet. So I'll get all these this side filled here. And then I've got, uh, you probably won't even be able to make these out. They're so small. But uh, I think you can see those little windows. And uh, there's my little ovals. They're not all perfect ovals. Uh, but like I said, uh, there there's enough. I, I bought this um, frisket paper, this uh, frisket... Uh, masking and uh, it actually cuts a little better than the regular vinyl uh, the windows are more oval on this than they were <laughs> they were on the the uh, other vinyl I was trying to use so I'm gonna stay with this and uh, there's a couple quite a few decent windows on here so if I print enough of these I cut enough of them sorry I keep forgetting I gotta fix my focus on this there we go if I uh, cut enough of these out, I should be able to get enough to uh, at least uh, do this. Fortunately, there's not a lot of oval windows on this. So um, I think, uh, I don't know how many is on the saucer section, but uh, that saucer section is going to be a whole different deal anyway. We'll talk about that when we get to it. But uh, so I've got those ready to try out. I just got to finish filling in this side. And then I'll put those masks on. And I will come over this with a black to light block. And uh, I'll remove the masks. I think. I think I'll remove the mask. Remove the mask. I think what I did on my Enterprise C is I removed the masks and then reapplied masks to keep it from building up too much on the masks themselves, which is a lot, a lot of masking and unmasking. But uh, and then I came over it with my uh, my whole color. My whole color. I I'm thinking. Uh, I may use the same color I used on my Enterprise C because I'm really liking that color. I know, know the refit is more of a, a white to most people. And, and uh, I'm not too sure about the Excelsior though. To me, the Excelsior, I mean, when I look at pictures, it, it was probably white as well. But um, I, I kind of like, to me in the movies, it looks more like a, a little bit of an off-white. More of an off-white than what the Enterprise does. So I'm thinking I may paint this the same whole color that I used for my Enterprise C. It's kind of a step, you know, between the two since uh, a, a uh, refitted version of this eventually becomes the B anyway. But I don't know. We'll see. I'll, I'll consider that and, and figure out what, I want, what color I want to go with on that. But uh, anyway, that's where I'm at on this. I've got this just about ready. Like I said, I just got finished filling these in. It's going to take me probably another two hours to get that done. And uh, then that will be ready. And... Uh, on my neck, my interconnecting dorsal actually turned out pretty well. Focus on this. Uh, you can see I did pretty good with that seam in the front. Turned out pretty well. I think another coat of uh, primer on this and uh, 
she'll be good to go but uh, yeah you can't really see that seam on the front the back you can see it a little bit there but like I said once I put another coat of primer on that I think that'll go this side's pretty good the other side you can see a little bit of a seam but uh, I think another coat of primer that'll be good to go basically what I did with this to, to kind of get this all blended together was uh, I took my my perfect plastic putty and just put some on my fingertip and just kind of ran down the seam on the front here um, I let that dry up and then I took a piece of sandpaper I think this was like a 400 grit and uh, I didn't go real hard on it. I just want light on because you don't want to remove all the ridges otherwise you're gonna have a problem but I just sanded it to where it looked like it was, I was starting to see some evenness uh, on the front edge uh, and so I just sanded it some not a whole lot and then I came in with my I think it's a yep to me a scriber and I just rescribed right across the seam on each of those lines that took a little bit to do but uh, it's worth it. it turns out real nice it, it makes all those lines blend together and uh, like I said once I put another coat of primer on that I think I think it's gonna be good to go I do have a, um, a 3d printable file uh, that I bought some time ago when I, when I picked this model up when it first got re-released. Um, I think it's from Model Works, maybe, is the website. But uh, they uh, they have a 3D printable file of this neck in one piece, so you don't have any of the seams. Um, but I don't think I'm going to need it. I think this turned out real nice, and uh, if I can use the kit part, I'm going to use the kit part. So uh, we'll see. I think I'm going to stick with this, though. It turned out pretty nice. So anyway, that is where I am at. I am going to uh, get this other side filled in. And uh, when I get the masks on this before I go to light block it, I'll come back and show you what that looks like with all the masks in place. And then I will light block it and we'll be ready to go to the next step after that. So give me a bit to work on that. All right, so I've got the, uh, that first set of masks. This is kind of my test piece. And uh, let me focus here. You can see those masks are on there. And uh, center it up as best I could. So what I'm going to do now is put uh, a coat of black primer over the outside of this to light block from the outside. That way when I take the masks off, I'll still have windows. So uh, I'll probably go ahead and, uh, I'm not sure yet, I may go ahead and just put primer over the whole outside and uh, that way I've got primer on here already for when I go to uh, to paint this because I'm going to use the craft acrylics to paint this uh, whole color with on this. So give me a minute. We'll go paint that and we'll come back and take a look at it. All right. So I've gone and put a, uh, a black primer coat on to light block from the outside. And then I went ahead and I put on this top coat, which is uh, what I'm using is this craft smart fall gray. And uh, this fall gray, it, the camera's probably not going to pick it up very well, but it's it's kind of an, an I guess it's a, a craft paint version of Insignia White, really. It's it's kind of an off-white a little bit, and I love this color for, uh, I used it on my Enterprise C, which you, uh, you can see in the background over my shoulder uh, when I do the introduction. But uh, it's I think it's a great color to go to. I, I, you know, the, the refit is, uh, is great to do in white, but... Um, I think at some point, you know, they, they had to transition. And this may, you can do this in white as well. I just thought I'd go with a uh, kind of an off-white color a little bit to give it uh, a little bit of a different look. But, uh, so I'm going through and pulling off, as camera washes out so much. Let me try to focus and see if I'll bring it in. Yeah, there we go. So you can see I'm pulling the masks off where the windows were, and you can see how nicely detailed for the most part those windows come out now they're not perfectly round but at this scale uh you, you're not you're not really going to know this unless you get in there and look and, and the way these masks come off is i just i just pluck them like that i don't, I don't get up under them i don't scratch them i just kind of grab the edge with my knife and then use my thumb to press the edge against the uh the tip of the blade and just pull it right off and uh, these come right off and these definitely look better than my oval windows before let me show you what these look like focus and there you go you can see how that's turning out 
And uh, let me get the rest of these off real quick. And uh, I'll put a light behind it and let you see how these are looking. But uh, I did this section. I started masking a couple of the windows on the, uh, the lower hull here. You can see some of the ovals I did. But um, my uh, Cricut, like I had said, doesn't do the greatest job with masks this small. Um, so basically I've got to cut a sheet off like this and uh, go through and kind of pluck pluck off and use the ones that uh, that actually look decent and uh, I, I don't get use of all the masks that it cuts because they're not all that great so what I'll do is use the ones that I can and uh, and then I'll just have to cut some more but uh, And you can see there how that's turning out, and uh, that looks pretty good to me. Let me see if I can put a light behind this without, ooh, if I can do this without uh, totally washing out the camera. I think you can see, though, how that light's shining through those windows. So that's going to look really good, and uh, those windows should be pretty much in scale. And, of course, this one's going to have to be lit from up here. I can't really get the, uh, the light into it too well. But, uh, nope, I got it too far back. Anyway, once I get uh, get some lights in here and get these actually lit up, you'll be able to see them a lot better. But, uh, yeah, I think that's going to work out real well. I'm pretty happy with how that one's turned out so far. So uh, I will pull the masks off the other side and uh, start working on the lower hull and get that ready. And... Uh, I'm not going to go in every section and show. I mean, this pretty much tells you what I'm doing as far as the windows. So I'm going to get all these windows done. I'm going to get uh, get this uh, kind of to the point. I probably won't top coat this one yet because I'm pretty sure. The only reason I did this one is because I wanted you to see how it was going to look finished. But uh, I'm probably still going to have to do some, some seam work, some putty work along its edge. So there's no point in putting a top coat of that on this. Uh, what I would have done if I didn't want to show you this was uh, get this whole hull done, assembled, and then come black over the whole thing and uh, do do all my light blocking and do my top coat and then pull all the masks off at once instead of doing these separate. But uh, yeah, I think that's going to look, that's going to look real nice. It's going to turn out nice. So that's what I'm going to keep working on. I'm going to get, uh, get the rest of this done. I'm going to start working on lighting this. Uh, in the next episode, I think we're going to kind of wrap this episode up. I'm not sure how far into uh, how long this one is coming, but uh, I've got some 3D parts that I need to print too. Um, I've got uh, a little bit of photo etch that I picked up. I don't know where I stuck it at, but um, there is some photo etch available for this. I don't think photo uh, paragraphics does any, uh, but there is some photo etch over at... Uh, HDA Model Works, I believe, is where I got it from. I, I got it about the same time that I got, I ordered this model, and uh, I've got it, uh, I think it's over on one of my shelves somewhere, I'm going to have to go look for it. But, um, so I've got a little bit of photo I choose with it, with this. Uh, I looked at it a little bit when I pulled the model out, and uh, it looks like some of it I'm going to use, some of it I'm probably not. Uh, I do have some 3D printed upgrade parts for this that I need to print out and uh, see which one I want to use, whether I want to use the photo etch or use the 3D printed part. So I got a little bit to look at there. I did get another coat of primer on this. I think all that's left to do with this, really, is uh, to dry a brush silver over it. Your silver, or gun, uh, not gunmetal, but uh, something, something similar to silver. Silver or something similar. That's the best I can tell. I'll let you know what I use when I use it, but uh, this looks, uh, like it's got a bit of a silver finish and definitely on the underside of the saucer where this connects at this part here is definitely silver on the studio model so that's got to get painted silver so I think the only obvious thing to do is if this is uh, silver is to take this and dry brush silver silver over this and uh, still leave a little bit of uh, the dark in the recessed areas that way uh, it's not too overly shiny but uh, It'll have a little bit of a shine to it. 
but we'll see how that looks if I don't like it I can always change my mind and do something else on it but uh, that's probably what I'm gonna do so uh, that's pretty much where I'm going with this I'm going to uh, to do some more work on on getting this ready I am waiting on uh, Aztecs from Gus over at G cows to uh, to do this I am also still waiting for uh, oh you know what actually what am I talking about 3d parts I don't have three the 3d parts I'm waiting on or the uh, replacement parts are coming from cast over at Lake Monster Details. I think I do have a couple of, uh, I might have some 3D, uh, some 3D parts too, but uh, the main ones I'm waiting for are from Cass over at Lake Monster Details. He's got an upgrade set for this. And so I'm waiting on that and I'm waiting on decals from Gus. And uh, the lighting I'm doing on this is pretty much going to be a, uh, I have a, a couple of cards laying around that I'm not using, uh, effects lighting cards for the navs and strobes. So I might use one of those for this. And then I'm just going to do some LED strip lighting. So we'll look at that next episode. But uh, like I said, I want to pretty much wrap this one up. And uh, again, thank you everybody for watching. Thank you all the new subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button down below. Uh, if you get any use out of this information, please hit that like button and let me know that as well. But uh, any feedback is appreciated. So leave any that you feel like you, uh, you need to leave in the comment section below. And again, as always, a shout out to my sponsors, Cass over at Lake Monster Details, Gus over at GCALS, and Gary over at Mask Design. And again, I'll say on this video, I'm getting ready to start a 1537 refit build, and I will have another new sponsor to announce uh, when that build starts. So keep your eyes peeled for that. But again, thank you everybody for watching. Until next time, keep modeling.